So we have another one of those kind of crazy Bible stories this week, especially this one part when they're talking about the Holy Spirit and that it comes and it's like wind. It's a little confusing, but what I think is helpful when we talk about the Holy Spirit to think of the Holy Spirit as the air. So we can't normally see air, but we can feel it like when my hair just flew from this fan or when leaves blow in the wind, you know that that's the air doing that. And it's just like the Holy Spirit that we, we can't see it on its own, but when it's working through someone or cir certain circumstances, then we know that it's the Holy Spirit. So let me tell you this whole story. So the disciples, they're hanging out in this house celebrating the festival, a festival called Pentecost. And then suddenly wind blows through the house and they all have flames on top of their head. Now it's not burning them or hurting them, but we learn that, that it's the Holy Spirit that has brought these flames on their head. And then they also start speaking in languages that they didn't know before beforehand, but yet they all understand each other. It's kind of crazy. And then other people start gathering with them. And then Peter stands up and he starts telling everyone about Jesus and all that Jesus has taught the disciples. And then all these people who are gathered, they start living a new and a different life because of the Holy Spirit at work through them. And that's actually how the whole Christian church gets started with this first Pentecost experience. So I hope you all have a good week. Bye. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues that the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in the wilderness because each one had heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galatians? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Count Parthians, Medes, Calamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Libya, Egypt, and parts of Libya, near Syria, visitors from Rome, Rome, Jerusalem, Jews, and Converts, Judeans, Cretans, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Life is good. People are happy. The weather is changing. You see smiles all around, except there's a problem. You don't see it at first, but once you witness it, you, you can't ignore it. Of course, I am talking about Jerusalem 2,000 years ago during the week of Pentecost. When we hear the words Pentecost as Christians, we probably think about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the fulfillment of the prophet Joel's prophecy, but, but that's not what Pentecost was, at least not until we get to the book of Acts. You see, Pentecost had existed long before the birth of the church, long before the birth of Jesus, in fact. There was this week that the Hebrew people would gather in the city of Jerusalem, and they called it Pentecost, 50 days after Passover. Now, what this festival was about, historians would tell you it's, it's complicated. You see, it was after the harvest season. And, it, and, and everyone knows how, how hard farming in the first century would have been. I mean, the Hebrew people tied to the farms, working hours upon hours in the Middle Eastern sun. They're literally farming in desert ground. I mean, this is, this is difficult labor. And so by the time they were done farming, by the time all the crops were in, well, in the community I'm from, people would have said, it's Miller time. I'm not sure what they said back in the first century, but, but you know that people were ready to get off the farm, to take a break. And so the families would look at one another and say, listen, pack your bag, load up the camel. We're going to the big city. We're going to have a getaway, a vacation, if you will. And, and, and of course, the big city, well, there, there was only one. It was Jerusalem. And so the people from the farm would, would pour into the city of Jerusalem. It, it was kind of spontaneous. They'd been doing this for years and years until eventually the leaders of Jerusalem saw an opportunity. Everyone knows how important tourism is to drive the, the economic system of a community. And so they decided, you know, let's formalize this. People after harvest are coming to the city anyway. Let's make this a big deal. If we don't do it, someone else will do it. So every year, 50 days after Passover, let's have this week-long celebration where everybody comes and spends their money in Jerusalem and has, and has a great party. And so it was successful. Hundreds, thousands of people were turning out for this. Well, eventually, at some point, the religious leaders looked around and saw, this is a golden opportunity for us as well. People are coming, we have a captive audience. They don't get to see the temple very often, once a year at best. This is our opportunity to educate the faithful in, in the ways of God. And so they started by the reading the book of Ruth was, was the first tradition, but eventually Pentecost became, became uh, known for the time of, of giving the, the Ten Commandments where Moses had, had, had climbed Mount Sinai and brought down the, the Ten Commandments for the people of God. So you had the two great events in the history of the Hebrew people. You had Moses parting the Red Sea, the Exodus, the Passover event. They celebrated that one, one, at one week. And then 50 weeks later, the Hebrew people would gather in the city of Jerusalem again. And now they would celebrate the giving of the law, the Torah. Now, this is wonderful, of course. Now, you can, I'll let you decide why people were really coming to the city of Jerusalem, whether it was for the big party or for the religious uh, edification. But, but it was probably a combination of the two. It's a wonderful event, but, but this leads to a problem. You can probably guess what the problem is. I mean, you have, you have people like Farmer Frank. 
farmer Frank who has has been working hard and so finally finally after weeks upon weeks of hard labor he brings his children to the town of city of Jerusalem and he looks around and and he's impressed by the city because well farmer Frank outside of the city of Jerusalem he's never seen a building taller than one story he he likes to come to Jerusalem he would never live there of course I mean who would want to live in a big city like this but he he likes to come here to visit at the same time you have farmer Frank you also have sophisticated Sally sophisticated Sally she lives in Jerusalem she she grew up in the city she she loves the hustle and the bustle of the big city she she's heard about people who farm she she's thankful for their labor but she's never been on a farm she's she has no reason to ever visit and frankly she can't understand why anybody would want to live on a farm can you see what the problem is going to be when farmer Frank and sophisticated Sally run into each other there isn't a lot of common ground for them and this is not the only division in the first century oh no there are plenty of others for instance you have you have religious Randy religious Randy he 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 comes to Jerusalem for the right reasons he wants to learn about Moses and the giving of the law he wants to sit down with his family and friends and and, and he'll talk to strangers too about the, the the gift that the Ten Commandments really are he wants to talk about what is what does it really mean to honor your mother and father how how are his neighbors honoring the Sabbath remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy he wants to he wants to talk about these things he wants to grow closer to God meanwhile crazy Carol she just came to celebrate everybody knows Pentecost is the time to party to to let your hair down and just have a good time you think religious Randy and crazy Carol are going to be able to have a conversation you think they're going to be able to meet for coffee of, of course not they're there for two very distinct reasons there's there's so much division in the city of Jerusalem the people might be there but there there's tension among the community and I haven't even I haven't even mentioned politics yet oh you have you have all sorts of people in the first century you think our divisions are bad in the first century you had well you had compromising Christophers these are the people who who understand you see all the Hebrew people hate the Romans the Romans control Israel but but you have the pragmatic people like the compromising Christophers who look around and say listen nobody likes the Romans but what are we gonna do everybody knows that the Roman Empire could crush us without breaking a sweat and it's and it's true and so people like this just say well let's let's make the best of a bad situation let's just let's just go with the flow let's get along meanwhile you have the the burn it down Briannas. these are the people who who will not compromise who will not give in who who will always resent Rome and look for ways to sabotage it who really believe that someday they can go to war with the Roman Empire and and gain their own independence and just so you you know uh, you don't think I'm embellishing on this there were actually groups like this uh, the Maccabees who had led a revolt against the Roman Empire now, of course they were put down with 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 ease by the soldiers but that's that's how the people were some wanted to compromise and others others said no let's go to war you think the burn it down Brianna's and the compromising Christopher's can sit down and have a cup of coffee work out their differences of course not when all of these groups gather together when these individuals try to talk the conversations probably last 20 maybe 30 seconds before one or both of them depart in the other direction thinking the person they were just speaking to is positively absolutely crazy because that's that's what happens their their differences their perspectives the things that have shaped them and formed them and given them their worldviews are just so completely and utterly different that they can't find any common ground does that does that sound familiar at all we have so many divisions in our communities right now and you can define community however you would like you can think of community as the town you live in you can think of your community as your as your school district as your county as your state or even as your country however you want to define community this day it's pretty clear we have some serious divisions I, in fact I some of those divisions are are so heated so personal right now that even mentioning them kind of elicits some reactions in our bellies but if I 
If I were uh, in the sanctuary this morning and I just looked out to the congregation and asked them to name name the divisions, I think we could find all sorts. We could we could fill a notebook with the divisions. We could talk about the differences between growing up in the farming community or growing up in an urban area. We could talk about the the differences between the, the so-called blue collar jobs versus the so-called white collar jobs. We could talk about issues of some people identify themselves as, as as people who are passionate about peace and justice and and who and who in response to that will put black lives matter stickers in their windshields and we have others who say they are more law and order people and put things like blue lives matter on their facebook social media pages we have all sorts of divisions and those are just just a few of them in the midst of all of these divisions, it's tempting to think like the people in the first century thought, that this is just the way it is. That because of our differences, because of our distinct formative experiences, because of where we were raised, because of who parented us, because of the conversations we have with others, we're just always going to be like this. That there's always gonna be one side versus the other. And certainly right now, the temptation is to say, so which side is right? Frankly, that's, that's a sermon for another day. What I want you to hear about this point is this. I just want you to recognize that, that it doesn't have to be this way. Whether it's in the first century or now, because, because of what happens in the book of Acts. You see, in the city of Jerusalem, suddenly the wind begins to, bl to blow. The Ruach, the, the Numa, the, the Spirit of God blows into the city of Jerusalem during this very diverse time when people of different backgrounds are gathered together the wind begins to blow it causes such a ruckus that everybody and I mean everybody comes out there that means farmer Frank and sophisticated Sally stand side by side with one another that means religious Randy and crazy Carol are there as well. Even, even compromising Christopher and burn it down Brianna are standing together in that crowd because they're all so curious. What's, what's this noise? What's happening in the city of Jerusalem? And as they gather in this crowd, suddenly out of the upper room steps the disciples, the followers of Jesus, those sometimes frightened, sometimes courageous, sometimes say the right thing, sometimes say everything incorrectly, followers of Jesus, who step out on the day of Pentecost and they begin to speak. In their broken words, they begin to tell the story of Jesus crucified and now risen, who has saved the world. And as they tell the story of Jesus, a strange thing happens. All the people, Luke tells us all the people begin to hear in their own native language. People are there from all over, both Israel, from the various villages and beyond. People here in their own native languages. Think about that. People here, in spite of their differences, in spite of the different things that have formed them and shaped them, in spite of language, the people are able to hear, to understand. For 20 years, I've been telling the story of Pentecost and and frankly, while I preach a different sermon every year, the point is always the same, that the Holy Spirit comes, falls upon the church, and it gives us the courage to go out and witness to the good news of Jesus Christ crucified and risen. And to be sure, that's, a, that's, that's often the point of Pentecost. That is probably the point of the story, and it's certainly the takeaway, a good takeaway, a faithful takeaway from a Pentecost sermon or from any sermon, is to go out and share the good news. But the thing that has taken me aback this year that I've never noticed before is how the miracle of Pentecost isn't just the courage to speak, it's, off to, it's also the gift to hear. The people of God are able to hear. The power of the Holy Spirit opens people's ears and their hearts to understand, to listen, to hear their neighbors speak. It gives Brianna, burn it down Brianna, and, and compromising Christopher an opportunity to learn from one another. To be clear, when they talk, they're probably not going to suddenly agree on the future of their country. They're probably going to still have differences. The Holy Spirit doesn't come and just mitigate all those differences. But in this moment, the Holy Spirit 
has blown into the city of Jerusalem and has given them an opportunity to learn from one another. I wonder if they will take it. I wonder if Farmer Frank and Sophisticated Sally will share a cup of coffee and, and talk about one another to share their stories. Maybe, just maybe, each of them have something to learn from the other. Maybe when Crazy Carol hears about religious Randy's experience and why faith matters so to him so much, that maybe maybe that could be meaningful in her life as well. And likewise, when, when religious Randy hears about Crazy Carol and why she hates going to worship, maybe there's a lesson there that he could bring back to his community. There's something there for each of them to learn. The Holy Spirit has opened this opportunity to learn, to grow, to hear from one another. I wonder if they will take it. People of God, in these divisive times on this Pentecost week, this Pentecost Sunday, maybe the takeaway for the people of God this year is not to go out and to share the good news of Jesus Christ alone with our words and actions, but maybe the takeaway this year is that God is calling us to listen. To listen, to hear, to understand. Not just those who are like us, but the stories of those who are different from us. Maybe, just maybe, the world doesn't have to be like this. Maybe our communities can be transformed if we are willing to sit and to listen and to learn and to grow. Because if the people of God, if the followers of Jesus, if those of us who are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, aren't able to take the Spirit's lead here and to learn from those who are different from us, then what chances do our communities really have? But if we do, if we do follow the Spirit's leading, if we do listen, if we are willing to learn, if we are willing to listen without, that doesn't mean sacrificing everything we believe, but simply listening to our neighbor to understand better their perspective, where they're coming from, just maybe, just maybe there can be some sort of transformation in our lives and in the lives of our community. That's what the Spirit coming into our lives, that's the opportunity the Spirit opens to each and every one of us. I wonder what our communities, I wonder what our town, I wonder what our state, our country would look like if the people of God follow the leading of the Spirit this week. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We would like to thank everyone for the financial support you have given to United Lutheran Church here in Red Wing. The options in giving are to text and go on the mail at on the, uh, to the church or go to our website. The fourth choice is come and worship with us. We have a wonderful staff here, a great congregation with lots of activities. So come and be a part of our faith journey. Blessings to you. Dear God, we pray for nurses, doctors, and health care workers. Surround them with your presence and fill them with strength as they work tirelessly to care for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of God of love, fill this congregation with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sweet. 
Holy and gracious God, we pray for those we know and love who are hurting today. We pray for Jerry Halverson, Arlene Adalin, Trudy Kuntz, Forrest Whipperling, John Weeks, John Hodgins, and all those we name before you in our hearts. We ask, Holy God, that you pour out upon them your Holy Spirit that you fill them with your strength, your healing, and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. It is the day the Lord has made, and we will be joyful in it. Today we ask you to bless Pastor Justin as he begins his sabbatical. May he enjoy the time with family as well as needed rest. We pray he may also receive insight into the future of the church as we continue to move forward. Thank you for Brian, Lisa, and Amanda and for their willingness to lead us during the next three months. They are a blessing and we pray you will give them strength and joy as they minister to United. Thank you, Father, for this congregation of faithful servants. There are so many blessings in our lives, far too many to name. Perhaps the most wonderful gift is your gift of love. May we share this love with others. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the love of the Father, the tenderness of the Son, and the presence of the Spirit gladden your heart and bring peace to your soul, this day and all days, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, this is Jenny. Always oh, my favorite council. Oh.
What about the Diet of Martin? Oh, yeah. That that's a thing. Good, that, that's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. Yep. We need I, to know about that. Hey, um, you guys got this? Yeah. No, no, no problems, no challenges, no, you're, you're good? We're all set. All right. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'll see you in three months. All right. Have fun. See yeah. ya. See ya. Genie, he's gone. Next no, door with a nice chair one. and a nice this desk. I'm in the basement with barely any chair. window. Yeah, I was wondering if I could get an estimate on how much it would be to add a hot tub to the basement of the church. They'll be okay. No, and the lamp is running smells like books. Mom, I'm